How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week 10, and we are on to a buy right now as we just beat Toledo and we move to 6 and 2, earning our bowl eligibility. Uh, the top 25 has seen a little bit of chaos recently as things went haywire for a few top teams. We had number two, Michigan, losing to Minnesota. We had the number four team in Georgia Tech, and then we had numbers 10. 7 and 14 all also taking losses and we're gonna have a couple more ranked losses for sure this week as there are a few ranked matchups but the way this season's been going i wouldn't be surprised to see some crazy upsets on top of all of that we are a team receiving votes so with a little bit of chaos and with a win for us uh, in our next game we could potentially be into that top 25 which is pretty impressive it is a bye week though so we do need to do a little bit of recruiting and with our low lock cheese guys and all of that we're in a decent spot i was going to try to hold on with josh clifford but oregon state has now offered him a scholarship which means there won't be a chance for us to pick that guy up other than that we're looking honestly pretty solid with a lot of these guys we've gotten pretty lucky with a lot of low lock cheese I think Luke Clark, this kicker, we're actually going to get kicked out of. We have a visit week 12, but I don't know if we can hold on long enough for that. But uh, just overall, we're looking just really, really solid on so many of these players. We have one more guy ready to visit is Jeff Johnson, a free safety. He's not great, but he is a free safety, and we're in the lead with him. We will send him to our Central Michigan game. Uh, it's the only home game we have left that we can send him to, but also... We get the XP for complimentary visits and a visit versus a rival. Any of our matchups against Central will be really big with uh, bonus points earned as well. And I'm thinking maybe we offer a scholarship or two this week. There's a couple guys that we've been giving points to that I don't think we have offered scholarships. So we'll do that. And then I guess just with the points that we have, we have so many. We'll just offer scholarships to everybody uh, that is left on the board at this point. And then with the rest of our points, uh, well, we're going to get rid of Tony Wilson because we don't have a chance there. But like with Vince Young, we'll give him some points and we'll go to Corey McCutcheon and we'll give him some points as well. So our work in the bye week is over and we can advance towards week 11 where we will play on the road at Buffalo. And we have, let's see, a couple more guys ready to visit. Still just a lot of recruiting battles as we grind down towards the end of this season. Buffalo is a very, very bad team. One in seven. So hopefully we should be able to get this one. We are favored to win, which doesn't happen very often. Uh, and we lead them in every statistical category except for rush offense where they get about 19 yards a game more than us. After the big game that we had last week, our turnover differential is now plus four on the season, which puts us top 20 in the country. So that is really spectacular. Who is the one team that Buffalo's beaten? It's Northern Illinois, and it's their last game. Uh, and they won that 20 to 17. So a little bit interesting. We will play Northern Illinois our last game of the season, which is maybe good news for us if they're going to lose to a team like Buffalo. That should mean that we should be able to take care of them as well. Recruiting wise, we're going to set up these two visits. Still just sending them to the Central Michigan game. And then we will give our points to some guys uh, near the bottom of our board. Did anything crazy happen in the top 25 that last week though? Uh, we aren't ranked, so what crazy stuff could have happened? Nebraska survives, but... They move up, which means there was some chaos. A lot of ranked games this week. It's Georgia that took the loss. They lost 7-14 to against Florida, who has jumped up to number 14 in the country. Were there any other losses? Iowa at number 3 lost their first game of the season. So we're just down to one undefeated team left at this point in the year, which is pretty crazy. Other than that, uh, let's see, number 13, Minnesota took their second loss. Notre Dame took their second loss. They got blown out by Navy, 37-7. to That's pretty crazy. Uh, are we still receiving votes? Oh my gosh, we're so close. Behind Akron, who has beaten us, and then just behind Navy. So we are ranked 28th in the country, and a win this week would have to be enough to get into that top 25, I think. So let's go ahead and get into this game. Buffalo, how bad are they? A 74 overall with a 79 offense and a 70 defense. 
uh, I'm not too concerned with that. So hopefully we can just get the job done. We're just going to go very simple. Maybe not the most attractive away uniform, but we're going to Buffalo. So it doesn't matter all that much. We'll have the Bulls wear. Let's see. They have their alternate one, their alternate three. But I like the alternate one. The black pants are a good look for Buffalo. So we'll give them that. And we can just load into this one feeling very confident. Look how bad they are statistically on offense. 124th in points and total yards. 120th in passing yards and 96th in rushing yards. Defensively, they're not much better. Uh, whereas we are very mediocre. Maybe a little bit bad on offense, but our defense has been shutting things down. They've got a visiting prospect and their top players. Well, they've got a good kicker, but that doesn't matter. Uh, 89 overall for a left guard and 83 overall for a left tackle is pretty solid. But the left tackle is injured and he's actually going to be out. Strained back has him out for two more weeks. And they've got a wide receiver out for the rest of the season with a broken vertebrae, which is pretty brutal. Well, it wouldn't be a game late in the season in Buffalo if it wasn't snowing. We're here at UB Stadium. Trying to hope for the best. The cold might affect us a little bit. We are from Michigan as we go tails, and it does not fail us. So we'll kick this ball off. It's a windy one, too. 13 miles an hour on the day. So let's go ahead. We're going to start with the sim this time. The kickoff uh, is just taken for a touchback, and then they're going to start moving. Pass thrown away on second down. Brings up a third and four, and we'll hop in to see what this defense can do. You would expect with how good they are. Uh, and how bad Buffalo's offense is that we should just be able to get the stop. But who knows? Pass thrown and it's deflected away. That was a close one a little bit earlier. I think that gets completed, but fourth and four. And we're just going to get the ball. They'll punt it away. Well, five yard penalty first. And then they punt it away. And we're just going to take over from the 26 yard line. So a decent punt as we'll hand it off to Jesse Wagner on first down. Hoping for the best. Following the blocks and... He seemed a little bit slow off the line there. Still got three yards in the process. It's going to be hard for me to reel myself in in this game as we will be looking for a couple of deep shots, including on this second and seven on the play action. X was... Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> wow. I've got no words for that because I got incredibly lucky. We had A open at one point, and then I threw it to X, even though he wasn't open, but as Bird was getting hit when he was throwing the ball... Uh, he threw it behind and Nixon came down with it. All right, second and two. We got the eight yard carry there and we're going back looking deep. As we'll try the play action and we'll see if anybody's gonna get open. Could be there to Wilson. Good, good play from the linebacker to swat that one away. Well, we got to convert on third down so we will run the ball. Uh, we probably should run the ball more than we have already but I'm feeling like uh, passing today. And that one doesn't work. Jesse Wagner hitting the backfield, breaks the tackle, but then just gets back to the line. And on fourth and two, coach is calling our number. The offense stays out on the field. We're going to give it to Jerome Simmons for his first carry, and hopefully the fresh legs plus some good blocking from the offensive line will be enough. He'll get nine yards to move the chains. We're going to try this option. Hopefully we get good blocking from our wide receivers. That one's on the turf. That was a foolish mistake for me. I tried to get a little tricky with it. And we pitched it right into the defender to fumble. Buffalo recovers. So pass thrown away on first down out of a five-yard rush. On second down means that Buffalo will have a third and five. The good news is we can make mistakes like that. And I don't think that it'll bite us too hard. So long as we don't make them too often in this game. Buffalo throwing a deep ball on third and five. And that one was never had a chance of being completed. So the quarterback throws it. 10 yards past his receiver and they're going to punt it away. We'll take the fair catch. Decent punt. That one gets us to the 17 and we'll, we'll just have to start our drive over again. Maybe no uh, options on this drive as we got to make sure that we hold on to the football. Buffalo's actually doing a surprising job at stopping the run so far today. Second and 12 as they hit us in the backfield again. And this one, Wagner, just doesn't have the speed to outrun the edge there. That means it's going to be third and eight, and we'll have to pass the ball. Uh, worries me a little bit. They are looking like they want to bring some pressure with the safety, and it is a safety blitz. And I can just barely get rid of it in time. 
line doesn't hold up long enough and nobody was open enough for me to feel confident throwing. So fourth and eight, we're going to have to punt. Uh, well, they did get a five-yard penalty against them, which helps a little bit, but Adisa returned for Buffalo. And we recover a fumble on first down. Well, I guess that's one way to move the football forward. Back even on the battle for turnovers today as we'll get a new set of downs to work with. And the offensive line has got to figure some stuff out because we are not having much success running the ball today. Feels like Wagner usually averages around five yards a carry. He's down at about two so far in this game, which isn't going to cut it. We'll try the counter. Decent little cut there. That's going to help him get back to the norm as he gets us a third and two to work with. We have not converted on third down so far this game, but we're going to give it to him up the middle to try and do it on this one. Cutting it back, not enough. I cut it back a little bit too far. So it's fourth and inches. Coach is going to call on us to go for this one again. And I'm going to take a really, really big chance here, and I'm going to send Mitchell deep, and we'll see. Can we convert this? On fourth and inches, this could be a terrible mistake. I expect them to bring a lot of pressure in. We get sacked. Not a smart decision for me. Surge didn't get free soon enough, so I couldn't just lob it up as early as I had wanted. So it's a turnover on downs. I'm just playing too risky. We got to slow it down. Third and five for the defense once again. Buffalo, just like us, has not converted on a third down attempt so far today. They've been passing it on their third downs. And they're going to try that again on this one. We're bringing a little bit of pressure to the quarterback. That one is batted away, nearly intercepted. And just like us, they can't seem to move the ball. So Buffalo's punt goes out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And with one second left on the clock here in the first quarter, we're going to go with the slip screen. And I'm lucky that that one wasn't a sack or intercepted. Our offensive line is not playing well so far today. It's zeros. At the end of the first quarter, a 6-2 Eastern Michigan playing a 1-7 Buffalo. And we are struggling right now. If the offensive line can't give us time to throw or good gaps in the running game, we could be in trouble. So who, something's got to give. Maybe we just go short passes. I'm not certain. Uh, Wagner there. That's a decent run. Find some space, but he didn't have to rely on the offensive line to get it. Gives us another third down, though. 0 of 3 so far on the day. We're looking for our first conversion. We don't have a long ways to go. Hopefully this is caught, and there we go. We find Wilson, and Zach will hold on to that one. Good completion, and it moves the chains, most importantly. So how about this? A read option. Will Bird cooperate with us on this one? He won't need to. We're handing it off. Wagner broke a tackle, but then got stuffed. And Buffalo's defensive line is just suffocating. All right, Jesse, we're going to give it the ball to him again. Second and 10. I'm just not feeling at all confident trying to follow the blockers. A beautiful little slide back inside. That one got seven. But again, we're in this third down. Nearing midfield this time. We'll look for the short pass. And I'm going to throw it almost immediately to Nixon. No, he didn't throw it when I pressed the button, so we'll throw it. Uh, that's just a stupid one. Good catch from Broussard, but my decision-making is not good. So Coach doesn't want us to go for it again. I can't say I blame him. Uh, we punt it down to about the 11, and they're going to have a lot of work to do. It's another third down, though. This quarterback, I think, has two pass completions uh, out of, like, 10 attempts. So we got him good there. Third and three. They haven't been running the ball with any success, but on the option, that's going to do it. Their first third down conversion. We just got to make sure that we're hitting this quarterback hard when he keeps it. Buffalo is in the hurry up, and they have a chance to take the lead as we are about halfway through the second quarter with no points on the board. He's going to scramble, taking off. He gets the sack. He looked really, really slow on that one. That's a loss of three. Gives us a second and 13 where they're going to get a four-yard rush, and now we can hop back in for the third and nine. Uh, can we get the stop? It's most likely going to be a pass. Our pass coverage has been pretty solid so far today. They're going to go with the short check down, and the defense gets there in time. A big open field tackle, and he finally gets called down. Fourth and two. I expect they'll punt this one away, and that is exactly what happened there. So we get a mediocre return out past the 25. First and 10. Halfway through the quarter. And again, we're lucky to get a pass off and not take a sack. 
I just don't know what the heck is going on here, but we are really struggling. Not only that, but losing the turnover battle certainly doesn't help. Or no, wait, we tied that up. Well, it doesn't matter. Jesse Wagner can't run. It's third and ten. Well, when in doubt, what do we do? We just try to throw it deep. Third and ten. Nixon and Mitchell going as far as they can, but we throw the check down to Broussard. He comes down with it short of the line, but then gets across and gets to the spot. That was a risky throw, but it works out. Really did not think that that one was going to be completed. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. How about this? Another first and ten. We will run the ball. And Wagner, again with the carry, just two yards. Their linebackers are just shutting everything down. One of the worst defenses in the country, and we are fully struggling. It's second and eight. We'll step back again. Go with the check down, and Zach Wilson will give us a manageable third and one. If we don't convert this one, it's definitely going to be a problem. Jerome comes in. I would consider him more of our power back, and that's good because we're running it up the middle on the ISO, and there we go. Takes a little hit, stumbles through it, converts and gets us across midfield. Just got to keep moving. Even a field goal here could be big as we will, again, throw the check down. I think our X to Nixon was wide open, uh, but I'm taking the yards where we can get them right now. We can't afford to leave yards on the board in this game, so that's what we're doing. Oh, no. I hit the wrong button. Meant to hit B. I hit A. Almost picked off. Now it's third and six. 46 seconds left in the half. If we do convert this one, we're still going to have our work cut out for us. We'll probably have to go hurry up. I'm expecting right bumper to come open, and he is. John Wilson gets it. Doesn't get out of bounds, though, so we're going to go hurry up after the 17-yard catch. And the plan here is hand the ball off and then take the first time out. Jesse Wagner on the buck sweep, trying to get some blocks out towards the edge. He's not going to get any. That looked like a face mask to me, but it's not. So just a gain of one. And on second and nine, again, we'll look to throw. I'd like to throw it to Nixon here. I don't think he's going to be open. I'm trying to wait. We're going to go check down, give it to Wilson, and he's going to get out of bounds to stop the clock. All right, it's third and four now with 30 seconds. It looks like they want to bring pressure. We've got some relatively short routes. Can we complete any of them? I'm throwing it to Mitchell. Surge gets the catch inside the five for the first and goal. If we can't punch this one in from a yard and a half out, we have some real problems. I'm going to bring Ferguson in motion. Mitchell coming over. A weird one on the counter. Simmons loses yards. Yeah, that was stupid. Second and goal with 18 seconds. I'm going up the middle again. Uh, I feel like we're going to get stuffed and we'll have to be lucky in the hurry up. But I got to believe at some point, nothing doing there. We got a yard. The clock is burning awfully quick. Third and goal. Let's try to see if we can get a pass off in time. It's going to have to be pretty much all or nothing. As we go to right bumper, his time expires. Smith can't get in. We're stopped a yard short. Oh my gosh. The worst clock management you've ever seen. <laughs> We're going to lose to a 1 in 7 Buffalo if we keep playing like this. Oh, absolutely disastrous. It took way too long for that play to get developed. And if we just walk away with nothing from that drive where we get as close as anyone has. We do get the ball to start the third quarter, but we should be up like 20 points by now this is painful uh defense is doing a good job the offense is just not even close to getting their job done just take uh the kickoff out to the 25 as we will go with the end around on first down and Serge mitchell his attempt to run also gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage this feels like uh one of those matchups where the game just doesn't want me to win because nothing is working Wagner decent attempt there gets us a manageable third down but I've said that so many times today and we are only 50% converting these today so on third and four what can we do stepping back to pass the bring in pressure I can't get the pass off again our offensive line is worthless today it's fourth and 12 and we're gonna have to punt that one away immediately Buffalo's going to get a drive eventually, I got to imagine, but uh, who knows where it's going to come past thrown away on first down, a run for six yards there on second down, and now third and four. We've held them to 50-some-odd yards of total offense. 
And they've only converted once on third down, but all it takes is one play. This one lobbed up and it's intercepted. We get the turnover. We lay in the turnover battle. And we catch maybe a little break there. I think we're going to try a full hurry up drive on this one. Got to continue to change things up until something works for us. Jesse trying to stand up and keep going, but he got four yards up the middle, which is better than his average right now. Um, I think I'm going to force this one to Serge Mitchell. Stepping back, he's going to have the one-on-one. -on -one. The timing route, he's got the speed to get away from his man. Oh, that step back was about to be so dirty, but a big tackle from the safety prevents that from being a whole lot more. Good first down throw, though. That's our eighth first down of the game. Still zero points on the board, though. And at some point, I might just elect to kick a field goal in the middle of all this. Jerome. I don't know why he's trying to juke anybody out. He gets popped as he tries it. Only gains two on the play. And we'll go back to the air on second and eight. They're playing Mitchell really, really deep. So that could be something we use. As this is a tough throw, but Wilson gets free and holds on through the contact. That's just bad coverage there. And Bird took another big hit there, which has been really, really frustrating and certainly not good for his longevity. He's taken a lot of hits in this game. We got to try to limit that as Wagner will lose some yards on the toss play. Oh, man. All right. Well, let's try the read option because I'm just running out of options at this point. So we'll see. Can Ed Bird do it? I'm fighting through the contact and Ed almost gets into the end zone it's third and goal surely we have to score a touchdown here again we pay homage to fullback you and try to punch this one in courtney smith multiple touchdowns on the year on just a few carries can't do it that time so close but just shut down at the line i'm gonna be stubborn here fourth and goal another fullback dive up the middle to courtney smith gotta hope for the best and the fullback gets into the end zone so finally a team has scored. We can be thankful that it is Eastern Michigan. We're going to take a touchdown lead in this game. The extra point is good. And now we can hope the defense will continue. A five-yard penalty against them certainly doesn't help. Uh, it's second and eight. I don't really understand how that works. And now it's third and four. So hopefully a chance. I got to imagine these guys run it and go on the ground on this third down because their quarterback has not passed well all game. And it's going to be a quarterback option. Keeper. And that's really the only reason they've gotten a first down at all so far today. Well, good news for us is we know this quarterback isn't ridiculously fast. And we can probably expect him to fumble if he continues to do that. This one, a designed keeper. Maybe a draw play there or something. Only gets two yards. And again, he takes a hit. Second and eight. Will they continue to run the ball? Or will they decide to pass at all? This one looks like... Uh, it's a triple option. <laughs> Quarterback hurdles over his own running back, and he's going to lose four yards on that one. That's like hilariously comedic timing there for him. Uh, third and 11, stepping back to throw. Pump fakes, goes downfield. This one should have been picked off. Corey Poole hit him right in the hands, and he dropped it. So our field position is not going to be nearly as good as... I'm going to try a four verts here and just see what happens. They're bringing pressure. I'm going to throw it short. We'll give it to Wilson, and we will try to make them pay for bringing as much pressure as they did. Could we turn it on? A two-score lead, I'll start to feel a little bit more comfortable, but certainly not fully there yet. Wagner on that first down gets a good five-yard carry, and that's going to end our third quarter. So as we head into the fourth, we finally have scored. We're up 7 nothing. Uh, but this is a really disappointing turn of events in this game. We should be up like 49-0 <laughs> looking at how bad Buffalo is. Sometimes, though, you play down to the level of your opponent, and that's kind of where we're at, I think, on this game. Giving it to Jerome Simmons to start the fourth quarter. And up the middle, Simmons gets a good run. There was finally a good gap there for him to hit, and he gets seven yards. All right, well, another first down. We'll look to throw it on this one, and I'm going to give it to Simmons. Jerome can't quite get his arm out for the stiff arm cheese, but gets nine yards on the play. If this could be a nice quick drive, that would be fantastic. All right, Wagner in on second and one, giving him the handoff. He's got a lot of space to work with, and he's going to get a solid chunky yards. We're only at 79 as a team right now. But we're starting to kind of figure it out a little bit is what it feels like. Maybe their defense 
is getting tired. They definitely have been on the field for a long time so far in this game. But even there, man, I'm really impressed by Buffalo. I know that their offense is atrocious. Uh, but I'm kind of surprised that they've only won one game so far this year. Second and eight. We'll give it to Jerome. Looking for some blocks. He's not going to get anything and he's going to lose a yard. So a third and long for us to try to convert here. And I'm going back straight to the AI play calling as we'll look for the slip screen. No idea if this is going to work. I don't even know if we'll throw it to him. But we'll give it a shot. Some blocking. Jerome almost gets there. Fourth and two. I'd call that a, a short two as well. But it's not enough. And I can't blame Coach for not wanting to go for it here. He's brought out the field goal unit. And trying to make this a two-score game. The kick is up. That looked good to me. And it'll be 10-0 as we lead here in the fourth quarter. So no return on the kickoff. What can Buffalo do? 10-yard penalty. Okay, second and 15 after the holding call. That's good news for us. We'll expect probably some passing but who knows as is that a false start or did we jump in the neutral zone? Well, that's going to back them up even further, man. They've been backed up to their own 15 yard line. It's second and 20 as we'll hope for the best trying to bring some pressure. They run it up the middle, cut it back out towards the inside, cut it back in towards the inside. I should say they only got a yard there. So very quickly, their drive is turned into some doo-doo because it's third and 19. A mile and a half to go. Quarterback gets sacked. It's a kind of a strip sack, so it's considered a fumble. Uh, offensive lineman picked it up, and it's fourth and 22. As good as their punter might be, it's not going to be that great. So we get a start in their territory on this drive with just three minutes to go. I think we're burning the clock here. Wagner, though, with a great move. Finds a good gap and gets 14 yards. I think that might be his biggest run of the game. Regardless, though, we're definitely burning this clock. Two and a half minutes left. We'll take every second that we can off and then just continue to run. Either Buffalo's going to take their timeouts here soon or we're going to win. And yeah, they do take their first timeout there. So second and four. We'll just continue to go with handoffs up the middle. All we have to get is really one first down. And that might be enough. Jerome Simmons. Beautiful eight-yard carry there. Second timeout taken by Buffalo. Certainly have the Bulls with their back against the wall here as we are almost inside. Two minutes left in the game. We'll give this one to Jerome again and have him cut it up the middle. Good broken tackle. Five yards in the final timeout taken by the Bulls. Now this might be incredibly stupid to do, but I'm throwing the play action pass. I'm looking for kind of a check down. Oh my gosh. How is our offensive line just so bad? Three Buffalo players in the backfield immediately. We never stood a chance there. We'll see. I mean, at least the clock was moving, but we got to convert this one. As I'm just heaving it into the end zone. Maybe Wilson can come down with it. Unfortunate. If I was a little bit earlier on that throw, I think there was a good chance. But it'll just fall incomplete. And coach wanted us to go for this one. There's a 14 mile an hour tailwind on a 40 yard uh, field goal here. Of course we can sneak that through. That was, was really close. I was not confident that that was gonna make it as Akron loses. So that's one team that was in front of us in receiving votes. Akron was uh, ranked 26th in the country. So they'll fall, that's good news for us. We hit a 40 yard field goal, uh, honestly a little bit closer than it ever should have been, but it's 13 to zero, which means they have almost no time to work with. A 32 yard pass downfield though. We're not out of the water yet. Clock will be moving on the Bulls. They don't have any timeouts left, but a touchdown and an onside recovery could do it. Is that one completed for 20 yards? Uh-oh, they stopped the clock getting out of bounds there, but they're already at the 24 yard line. Uh, Maybe we should be really glad that we kicked the field goal. I'm not sure yet. There's a man open as he falls out of bounds. Or no, they say he was in. So the clock will continue to run. 40 seconds left in the game. I don't think that was worth it for just four yards. They'll have to spike the ball here. Bring up a third and six. All right. Big, big plays for the defense here. This should not be a close game, but here we are. This one thrown towards the corner. That was caught inbounds for 16 yards. 
So it's a first and goal inside the five. What an absolute beauty of a throw and catch there. Is Buffalo going to score it? Interception would be great, but it's caught across the middle inside the end zone. Oh, no. 13 to 6. Is the extra point going to be good? We need them to miss one of these. They do have a 14 mile an hour wind in their face, but the kicker says no problem. He is like 95 overall. It'll be 31 seconds left there, down six. The onside kick attempt is recovered by us. Oh, thank goodness we can just take a knee and let this one end. I don't know when the last time I felt this nervous playing a 1-7 and seven team was, but that is something you don't want to experience often. We will let the clock burn down and just get out of here with a win. Uh, you know, a trap game. Snowy on the road against a 1-7 and seven team. We're overlooking them a little bit. We come in and they're... Uh, man, their defensive line did really, really good. Uh, we sneak out with the win. We can just move on to next week and hope that we can kind of figure some things out in the meanwhile because if we let play like this against a team with a competent offense, we lose that badly. Can we just collectively forget about this game? Just notice that it was a win, but not remember any of the fine details because I'm a little bit embarrassed with how much we struggled there. We do end up winning it, but it's 13-7. Uh, I mean, we held them to 48 rushing yards and 107 passing, which is really impressive. We win the turnover battle, which increases our season differential to plus five. But we were held to 104 rushing and 160 passing on 17, almost 18 minutes time of possession. So we just could not move the ball. Uh, our kicker is our offensive player of the game. Two field goals with a long of 40. And he made the extra point. And then Eric Lane, the middle linebacker, is our defensive player of the game with the forced fumble and fumble recovery. At the end of the day, I guess what really matters is that we are seven and two. Uh, Buffalo falls to one and eight, which is pretty rough, but it makes uh, it makes our season total look a little bit better as we move on towards another rivalry week there against Central Michigan. And we could be coming into this rivalry game as a ranked team. We know Akron in front of us fell. If just a couple more teams also lose, we could be in the top 25. Well, in terms of recruiting, uh, a couple more visits that we can hopefully bring here, but a bunch of guys ready to visit this week. And that's going to be a lot of commits, I think, after this game. We get a bunch of XP. Are we ranked number 23 in the country? 7-2, going to play a 6-3 Central Michigan, where we are favored to win, but they are the higher overall team. And they have a pretty stout looking offense compared to us, although their defense has definitely struggled. So we make it into the top 25. First time in who knows how long, if not the first time ever for Eastern Michigan. Oregon beats Cal. So the Bears fall from number four down to number nine. Any other losses? Penn State and West Virginia and Coastal Carolina. Our Teal Boys lost in overtime at Tennessee. That's an embarrassing loss. Uh, Purdue and Wisconsin took losses and dropping out is Alabama, TCU, Notre Dame, and UCF. I mean, we're seven and two. We're ranked in the top 25. I, I'm so happy. I didn't think it would happen this season. I didn't think that we could possibly go seven and two. We're five and one in conference as a 77 overall team, but we keep pulling wins out of a hat. We're finding a way not to lose, uh, even in games where we're struggling. We're just getting lucky there that we struggle against bad teams. So that is absolutely phenomenal. This Tennessee running back is still top of the board. Against Coastal, he ran for 179 and four touchdowns, which puts him almost at 1,600 yards and 21 touchdowns on the season. That is just absurd with the amount of games that we have left to play. We have award semifinalists out. Will we be on this for any of these? Uh, David West, the Coastal quarterback, is in third for the Maxwell. And so is Chad Bradshaw. Interesting for him. We have nobody for the Walter Camp for the Benrick. Believe it or not, we have nobody. Same with the Nagurski, the O'Brien, or the Walker. Will we have a single uh, semifinalist? We have to have at least one for like our defense, right? Our defense has played so well all season long. You would think that somewhere in there, we would have somebody. No, Nobody for the butt kiss. 
Nobody for the Thorpe. Wow, nobody for the Groza or the Guy or the Jet. So we don't have a single award semifinalist this year. That is honestly incredibly surprising to me. We take a look at season leaders. Ed Bird, 25th in the country in passing yards. Uh, Jesse Wagner, 42nd in the country in rushing yards. He's shy of 1,000 by just 70. Receiving-wise, it's Serge Mitchell at 104th. Chad Bradshaw is second in the country with 950. Tackle-wise, okay, maybe that's it. Uh, typically, you would see your guys with tackles, but I guess we are simming the defense, so they're not going to be quite as broken. 31 tackles for Eric Lane, I think it is. Sack-wise, Chris Banks has 231. And uh, Henry with the three interceptions isn't too bad, and we know we have at least a 40-yard field goal. And that's going to be enough to get Harris onto the board as a top 100 field goal kicker. So definitely an interesting season so far. I guess I overestimated how easily we could win an award. I, I genuinely thought we would have multiple semifinalists, but nothing there. Maybe we can prove them wrong against Central Michigan, but unfortunately that will be the end of this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please hit the like button. Uh, it helps the video be seen by a ton more people. And if you haven't already... Uh, feel free to subscribe as well so that you can be notified when new videos get posted. After you've done both of those, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. This will link to my Twitter where we're currently in the process of trying to give away a goonmaster t-shirt, but we need to hit 200 followers on the platform first. So if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter. After that, you can head down to the next two links, which are... Uh, a link to our community discord and a link to the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get that for yourself all that being said though thank you guys so much for watching my name is goon master you guys are the gray boys wherever you are have a good night have a good morning and we'll see you later adios